Nearly a year after Alvin Banks fired the shot that killed his wife, Katrina, a Virginia jury found him not guilty of first degree murder. It's not a victory. It's not a uh, reward because the bottom line is my wife isn't here anymore. Just weeks after being released from prison, he's telling his story exclusively to Crime Watch Daily. And why are you speaking out? Because um, after talking to a few of my friends, they, they have no idea what really happened. Um, and something as sensitive as this is, I wanted uh, everyone to know exactly what happened. The former Marine appearing far more muted in our interview than he did during his interrogation. At no point in my military mind would I ever point my weapon at my wife. I love her. Y'all hear me? I believe. I love her. Have you, you ever know. done that before? Hell no. Uh, okay. Hell no. Alvin says the tragic and deadly shooting occurred during the biggest fight he'd ever had with his wife. She was furious. I mean, I had never seen her as mad before. According to prosecutors, you went off on a profanity ranting raid. Right. Is this true? Yes. You were outraged. Yes. You were very heated. Yeah, absolutely. Isn't that how murders take place? People get upset, they get mad, they shoot somebody, they take them out. Were you that mad? No, that never entered my mind. According to Alvin, the argument started when Katrina noticed he'd repeatedly called her cousin, Roxanne. I said, Trina, calm down. I said, this was not that serious. She was looking for her earrings, and she called you first, but um, your phone was dead. Alvin claims Katrina became completely unhinged when she saw the selfie he sent Roxanne. And I'm like, you mean a picture of me and your brother at Buffalo Wild Wings holding a couple beers up? I said, yeah, what's wrong with that? Alvin says the jealousy-filled fight quickly escalated. Katrina grabbed his phone and headed downstairs. So I followed behind her. As I turned to go down the steps, I saw my 45, and I just grabbed it. I shut off rounds. With your training especially, people will ask, why did you pick up a firearm during an argument and fire it several times? Rage, just angry. I wanted her to stop. You know, and I figured, you know, popping off a few rounds, she would hear that and be like, whoa, that, that's, we're going to end this conversation. I just knew that those rounds would, you know, go through the ceiling and, and uh, settle on the floor. But one of the bullets ricocheted down into the basement, striking Katrina in the shoulder. I went downstairs and I saw her laying there. And I said, girl, get up, stop playing. I thought she was joking. Katrina wasn't playing. As I got closer down to her, I saw something shining on her shoulder. And I reached down and touched it. And I brought my hand up, and it was blood. And I was like, oh my god. The bitter fight was definitely over. Alvin had killed his wife, the mother of his two youngest children. When you heard your wife was dead, what went through your mind? First thing I thought were my children. If it wasn't for my children, I would, I would take my own life, without a doubt. But I have to be here for them. Alvin would soon face five felony charges, including first degree murder. What did you think when those charges were filed against you? I thought they were absolutely ridiculous. I just, I could not believe it. Uh, involuntary manslaughter, all day long. My wife is gone, and it was my actions that caused that. Alvin says had he been charged with involuntary manslaughter, he would have pleaded guilty and would likely still be behind bars. The defense contends that you overreached with going for the murder one charge. We believe that Mr. Banks' conduct was willful and premeditated, and because of the nature of the argument that he wanted to inflict harm upon her, Alvin did tell detectives the night of the killing he felt like choking his wife. This is supposed to sound I should have just grabbed her because I wanted to grab her. That's how I feel like choking you right now. That sounds like you wanted to harm her. When the detectives told me um, that, uh, that she passed away, in my mind I was thinking I should have just choked her, um, which would have been a difference between an argument, possible incarceration, but my wife would be alive. Alvin was convicted for endangering the lives of his two kids and for firing a gun inside a home. 
The day after the sentencing, he was released after serving a little more than 14 months behind bars. Not nearly enough for Katrina's heartbroken family. Did Alvin Banks get away with killing his wife, your sister? From me, from my perspective, I believe so. How do you feel knowing that Alvin Banks is walking around free? I don't think that the, you would want those words on camera. But Alvin feels his wife's death is a life sentence. I'm only a shell of the man that I was because my wife is gone. Um, the better half of me is gone. This will haunt me for the rest of my life. Um, this, is, this is torture. It's also been torture for Katrina's mother, who lost her son to heart disease a year before Katrina passed. What do you want to say to Katrina's family? It was an honest mistake. It was an accident. Katrina meant the world to me. They know that. Alice Cromwell says Alvin never apologized directly to her, and she can't accept his explanation. With a weapon, there is no accident, because you may have a choice. Despite the child endangerment convictions, Alvin is again living with his two kids, something Katrina's sister Diane didn't know until we told her. This is the first I'm hearing of this, so um, I knew he had visited kids, uh, and it was monitored. Uh, but I did not know that part. I'm sorry you didn't know. I'm okay. It's okay. Is that salt to your wounds that he is in the home with the children? <laughs> oh, it's not even a salt. It's like, um, if I can say it, it's just like I've been stabbed all over again and it's been taken away. You have your kids. They're with you. But you were convicted of endangering their life. This was an isolated incident. If it was an unsafe environment from past uh, actions, absolutely. If I had a history of anger, you know, temper tantrums or breaking things, shooting guns, anything. You now have a history of killing their mother. Right, but not one point in my time did I think that I would ever harm my children. Diane says Alvin also never thought he'd hurt his wife. Where do you think the children should be? No matter where these children are, he should not be living under the same roof with these kids. He was charged with a crime of their life. People would say that you don't deserve the kids. The weapons, I don't have any weapons in my home now. That's because as a convicted felon, Alvin isn't allowed to own a gun. However, his hope is to change that. The ex-Marine is planning to appeal his convictions. If I do ever get my privileges back, they'll all be under lock and key. It just won't, it just won't happen, you know. Um, my children mean the world to me. It was a bad decision. A bad split-second decision that's left his two children without their mother and left Katrina's heartbroken mother waiting to personally hear one thing. He never come to me and, and express to me what happened. Never said, I made a mistake. I messed up. I'm sorry why you can't come to me and say those words and mean those words. I haven't heard anything. A complicated criminal case for sure, so we brought in criminal defense attorney Sarah Azari to help us understand how this all works. Thanks for being here, I appreciate it very much. Let's start with your opinion on why prosecutors would stick with first degree murder as opposed to taking a plea of manslaughter. Is that overreaching? It's overzealous for sure, and I think that they overestimated the evidence in this case. There's no evidence of motive. There really is no evidence of premeditation. The prosecutors essentially had argued that when Banks went to get the gun and came back and shot around, that there was this opportunity to plan the shooting, and that's premeditation. They're wrong because this occurred amidst this heated argument, so really the proper charge would have been manslaughter. Do you think Katrina's family has a good civil case here, and what hurdles do they face? I don't think there are any hurdles here, Chris. I think they have a case for wrongful death in which they have to prove that there was a duty of care, which Banks had. He had to keep the safe home as a person that was living there, that he breached that duty by grabbing these guns and shooting around randomly. He's definitely breached that duty and that there was causation because of that breach of duty that this death occurred. I mean, but for him shooting around, this bullet would not have ricocheted and landed on Katrina. So I think they have a really good case in terms of liability. Here's a question. He was found guilty on the child endangerment charges, so it begs the question, how is he living with the kids again already? 
When you're deciding on, as a court of law, on the custody of children, it's about what is in their best interest. And I think when you look at the history of this man, he's a military guy, he's a good father, this was an accident, it was not a murder, that's why he got the child endangerment conviction. Um, ultimately, he's not going to be around guns. The home is going to be safe because he's a felon, he can't possess guns. He is going to have to go to extensive parenting classes. So at the end of the day, he may still be the most suitable person to care for these children. Sarah, as always, thank you very much for weighing in on this case. And for more on this story, you can go to CrimeWatchDaily.com. I'm Chris Hansen. If you like this story, make sure you tune in every day to Crime Watch Daily. You can find where the show airs in your city at CrimeWatchDaily.com. Watch it live or record it on your DVR and watch it at night. And to all those criminals out there, remember, we are watching.